السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today is uh, the last of uh, our uh, sessions for this series before the hadith of uh, Imam al-Nawawi. Uh, in fact, the booklet uh, of uh, these hadith uh, include 42 hadith and not 49. And today, inshallah, we will talk about hadith 40, 41, and 42. عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه قال أخذ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بمنكبي فقال كنت كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل وكان ابن عمر يقول إذا أمسيت فلا تنتظر الصباح وإذا أصبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك so Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took me by the shoulders and said, be in the world as though you were a stranger or one who is passing, passing through, a traveler. And uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, in the evening, do not expect to live till the morning. And in the morning, do not expect to live till the, till the evening. Take something when you when in health, when you are in health, to serve you in time of illness. And something in your life to serve you in your death. So this hadith uh, encourages the lack of contact, the lack of acquisition, and uh, it in also encourages asceticism in the world. So the stranger, uh, when there is a stranger in any place, he does not get in contact with people. He feels that he's a stranger and he doesn't know how they think, what they think, how, what they do. So he does not get in contact with them. So uh, this is the first, first image that be in this world as a stranger. The second image is be in this world as someone who is tra traveling or who is passing by. So the, the one who is passing by does not have uh, a lot to carry. So uh, he, he doesn't have uh, heavy, heavy loads. He doesn't have um, a lot of uh, things that he has to worry about moving from one place to another. And this is the other image that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is encouraging people to, to have. So be in this dunya either as a stranger or as someone who is passing by. So the... Uh, uh, the these two states of the stranger and the one who is passing by, these are recommended things for the mu'min, for the believer to have in dunya. Because what does, what does this mean? We all know that this dunya is not the final abode. So this dunya is just a place that we entered into and we are leaving. So when you want to, to, to travel from place to place, you don't take your furniture with you, you don't take the heavy stuff with you, you take something light with you. But this light things, these light things that you, you carry with you, these are the most useful for you. So in this dunya, 
do not worry about gaining from the dunya, from the um, uh, everything that's um, uh, all the adornment of dunya, because you need to to carry your good deeds with you. So when you build this dunya, build it in with the idea that you are leaving it one day. And what you want to take with you is just what you can, uh, the light deeds, the good deeds that you have to uh, carry them with you to the day after. In Surah Ghafir, uh, Ayah 39, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya qawmi innama hazihi al-hayatu dunya mata' wa inna al-akhirata hiya daru al-qarar. So, oh my people, this worldly life is only temporary enjoyment. And indeed, the hereafter is the home, it's the permanent settlement. And this is what uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized when he, when he uh, slept on a, um, a straw mat. And uh, when he woke up, there were some marks left on his body because of this straw mat. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an said to, to Sayyidina Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, uh, well, would that you make us spread out a soft bedding for you? So what was the answer of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? مَا لِي وَلِي الدُّنْيَا مَا أَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا كَرَاكِبِ نِسْتَ ظُلَّ تَحْتَ شَجَرَةٍ ثُمَّ رَاحَ وَتَرَكَهَا So he, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, What have I to do with the world? What have I to do with this dunya? I am like a traveler who, had, uh, who just sat under a tree to get some shade and then went away and left it. So this is how we should be in this dunya. We shouldn't care about all, uh, all the uh, things that um, uh, we, we, we see in this dunya. So the only thing that we have to, carry, to care about is the good deeds that we are doing in this dunya. This is what we, what we have. This is what we care about. Someone, uh, someone came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, Oh, Messenger of Allah, teach me something quickly. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ فَصَلِّ صَلَاةَ مُوَدِّعَ وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهِ So when you stand to pray, pray like a man bidding farewell. Do not say anything for which you will have to apologize. So when you, when you pray it, all the time, uh, just think that I might not pray the next prayer. I might be dead. So try to perfect your salah. Try to, to have khushu' in your salah. Salli salataka ka'annaka muwadda'a. وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهِ So do not say anything for which you have to apologize. So be careful what, what words you are, you are uttering. Be careful how, and how you are talking to people. Be careful not to hurt anybody. And be careful, because saying the word is easy, but apologizing is not as easy. So say the words that will not break any heart. Just have your uh, good, good words to say, and that will be considered as sadaqah. So every day uh, a person lives is a kind of... Uh, again for for the believer because he the believer would do his best to gain as much as he can and uh, 
he will know that he might not live another day. And this is what Bakr al-Muzami said. مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَخْرَجَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَى الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا يَقُولْ يَبْنَ آدَمَ اغْتَنِمْنِي لَعَلَّهُ لَا يَوْمَ لَكَ بَعْدِي So Bakr said, there is uh, each and every day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets to this dunya, the day will say, O oh, Ibn Adam, O oh, son of Adam, take advantage of me. Do as much good deeds as you can because it might be your last day. You might not have another day after me. So gain as much as you can during this day. Then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاحِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ This is again uh, another uh, focus that be prepared for death. And the way you get prepared for death is by having good deeds, because this is the only thing that uh, someone will take, anyone will take with him to the to the day after. So if you if you woke up, then you might not uh, be alive by the end of the day. And if you are at the end of the day, you might not walk up for the next day. So many cases we hear that uh, he slept, he did not wake up. She slept, she did not wake up. They went to wake them up, they, they are dead. إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاحِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam moves on and says, وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَضِكَ وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكَ لِمَوْتِكَ Take something when in health to, to serve you in time of illness. So do your best, do your best while you are healthy and uh, do something in your life to serve you after death. What does this mean? Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ صدقة جارية أو علم ينتفع به أو ولد صالح يدعو له. So Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه reported that the messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى said when a man dies his uh, his deeds come to an end except for three. So three things uh, happen that uh, would the reward of them will go on after someone dies. What are these things? Sadaqatun jariya, a continuous charity. When you pay to help anyone, poor, any, any person who is in need for your help, this is called a continuous charity. If you, if you help in building um, uh, a mosque, even if you pay just a few few uh, bucks here and there, then whoever prays in this mosque, you will get a reward for that. And this is a continuous charity. <inaudible> knowledge by which people derive, derive benefit. So someone builds a school. Someone uh, builds... Um, a um, uh, uh, center for uh, teaching Quran. This is all. This is all uh, um, uh, as a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity. A waladun salihun yadu lah. Waladun salihun yadu lah is the pious son, a good son. So who who will pray? For you, for for the person after he dies. So what happens when you raise your children? Raise them to be good to you after your death. And this is very important. Sometimes uh, someone would say, "Okay, um, I don't have any children." It doesn't mean to be your own son. Anyone who you helped one day, anyone whom you uh, cared for one day, who made to have for you one day. So that would be 
uh, a son who will pray for you after you die. So any prayer that you receive after your death, that will be uh, a, a continuous charity for you. And uh, we remember Sayyidina uh, Umar radiallahu anhu saying, اليوم عمل بلا حساب وغدا حساب بلا عمل. So today, in this dunya, there will be, uh, everyone uh, is doing something, uh, there will be lots of deeds, uh, good deeds or bad deeds, so everything is recorded. There is no reckoning in this dunya. But in the day after, no actions to take place. No worship to be done. It's just the reward or the punishment. Actually, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu yaqool, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi says, ma min ahadin yamutu illa nadim. Qal wa ma nadamatuhu ya Rasulullah. Qal in kana muhsinan nadima an la yakuna azdad. Wa in kana musi'an nadima an la yakuna naza. So Abu Huraira narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, there is no one who dies, but he shall regret. And they asked, what, what shall he regret over, O Messenger of Allah? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, if he was a good doer, someone who has a lot of good deeds, then he would regret that he did not do more. And if he was a person who has a lot of evil, uh, bad deeds, so he would regret that he did not stop and he did not repent. So the whole hadith is an urge for us to get prepared to the life after, to get prepared to death and to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving to the uh, next hadith, عن عبد الله بن محمد بن عبد الله بن عمر بن العاص رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به. So Abdullah bin Amr bin Al-As reported that Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, none of you is a believer or is uh, has a complete faith until his desire allows what I have brought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his rules, the rules of Islam through his beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have to follow these rules. So we have to obey Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Say, O oh Muhammad, if you should love Allah, then follow me. So Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins. So we have to accept all that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, all he judges, everything that he uh, that, uh, guides us to. In Surah Al-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا but no, by your Lord, they will not truly believe until they make you, Muhammad, uh, judge concerning that over which they dispute among themselves. And then when you, when you do, when you make this judgment, then find within themselves no discomfort from what you have judged. And they should submit in full, they should have, they should be in full submission to what you said and to what you judged. 
And the same thing is also mentioned in Surah Al-Ahzab when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا So it's not for, for a believing man or a believing woman that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger have decided a matter that uh, they should have a choice about that affair, about their affair. And whoever disobeys Allah and disobeys his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has certainly strayed into clear error. Uh, in fact, this hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به, reminds us also of another hadith uh, which was narrated by Anas رضي الله عنه when Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. So Anas radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, none of you will have faith, will have complete faith until he loves me more than his, he, he loves his father, his children, and all mankind. So how can we love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The first thing is to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we wake up and before we go to bed, we should have a word, we should have, we should send the root to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At least 100 in the morning, 100 in the evening. So this will be a protection for us during the day. You start with your day and you end your day with salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So inshallah, Allah will guide you in whatever comes between these two uh, salawat, these two se se sets of salawat that you send to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And always remember that all the sins uh, initiate from uh, the inclination, the, the, the soul inclination. So how a nafs is the reason for the sins. So when someone uh, favors his soul or his nafs to the love of Allah, to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the, to the orders of Allah, to the orders of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he falls into sins. So we have to, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and close to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be away from sinning. And the way we get to, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by holding a uh, tie to the Quran. So every day we should have a word of Quran. If you, if you cannot, if you are not fluent, then read at least one ayah, listen, listen to a reciter and try to repeat after him. If you are a fluent reader, then every day you should have, you should have a few minutes, you should have some time between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading his book, reading his words. So when you do that, then you, you, you are working on your heart. So the heart is always filled with dunya, with love of money, wealth, uh, uh, trivial things in this dunya. We should empty our hearts. And then we, we should clean our heart. And we clean it by salawat. And then it will be ready to receive the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of the Quran, the light of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when it's ready to receive that light, then it will be ready to have the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And normally the face 
reflects what's in the heart. You see so many people with radiant faces. So that, ref that is a reflection of what's in their heart. The good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nazi'at, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَلَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى But as for he who feared the position of his Lord and prevented the soul from unlawful inclination, then indeed paradise will, will be his refuge. So he worked hard in this dunya and he will be rewarded in the day after. So each and every one of us should be working on uh, getting the heart to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love Sayyidina Muhammad, and to love whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, and to love his beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moving on to the last hadith, hadith 42. An Anasin radiallahu anhu qal, Samirtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, قال الله تعالى يا ابن آدم إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان منك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك يا ابن آدم إنك لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا Amazing hadith that shows the vastness of Allah's forgiveness. Anas reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam, said, Allah the Exalted has said, O son of Adam, I forgive you as long as you pray to me and hope for my forgiveness whatever sins you have committed. O oh, son of Adam, I don't care if your sins reach the, highest, the height of the heaven. Then you ask for my forgiveness, I'll forgive you. O oh, son of Adam, if you come to me with an earth load of sins and meet me associating nothing, no one to me, I would match it with an earth load of forgiveness. SubhanAllah. So the first part starts with, Ya ibn Adam, innaka ma da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la ubali. We are asked to make dua. We are ordered to make dua. And our dua will be answered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord says, call upon me, I will respond to you. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us how to make dua. He says, اُدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَنْتُمْ مُوْقِنُونَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ دُعَاءً مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِلٍ لَاهٍ so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, says, Supplicate God and be assured of being answered. Know that God does not answer a supplication which comes from a careless and inattentive heart. Also, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, Ma min Muslimin yad'u bi da'watin laysa fiha ismun wala qati'atu rahim. إلا أعطاه الله بها إحدى ثلاث. So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri reports that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, any Muslim who makes a supplication containing nothing which is sinful or which evolves in breaking ties or relationship will be given for it by God one of three things. إما أن يعجل له دعوته he will give him as 
speedy answer. He will answer his call immediately. وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَدَّخِرَهَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ Or Allah will store it up for him in the next world. وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ مِنَ السُّوءِ مِثْلَهَا Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn away from him an equivalent amount of evil. So those who heard Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying these three things, uh, they, uh, they said, uh, then we will make many supplications. نُكْثِرُ مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ قَالُوا إِذَا نُكْثِرُ So the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu Akbar. So God is more ready to answer than they were ready to ask. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives us, uh, mentions the uh, ayahs of forgiveness. And uh, there are ayahs in the Quran that urge to ask for forgiveness. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Ask forgiveness of Allah. And Allah indeed is forgiving and merciful. So just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Do not say that, oh, I have a lot of things, a lot of sins. How can these sins be forgiven? It's just word for one word for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kun fayakun be and it will be so if he wants to forgive you he will just say gone very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِبْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا and whoever does a wrong or wrongs himself but then seeks forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah uh, Allah is, uh, you will find Allah forgiving and merciful. And Allah keeps accepting the uh, uh, dua, keep uh, answering the dua of those who make dua. What time? What time should we make dua for istighfar? In Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the answer. وَالْمُسْتَغْفِرِينَ بِالْأَسْحَارِ And those who seek forgiveness before dawn. So, remember, the time before dawn is, is uh, a blessed time. And about which Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, uh, that the Messenger of Allah says, إن الله يمهل ولا يهمل حتى إذا ذهب ثلث الليل الأول نزل إلى السماء الدنيا فيقول هل من مستغفر فأغفر له إن الله يمهل So Allah waits till when one third of the first part of the night is over he descends to the lowest to the lowest heaven and he says, is there any supplicatory for of forgiveness so that I will I forgive him? So before dawn, it's a time of answering the supplication. It's a time uh, when everyone is sleeping and you are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk to Allah. Tell him how you feel. Tell him that you feel sorry for, for sinning. And promise that you will not do the sin again. And ask for forgiveness. Show your repentance. Tell Allah that you repent. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you away from sinning. This is very important. You need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this life.
there are so many obstacles that we have to overcome in this dunya. The love of dunya, the love of wealth, the love of money, the love of so and so and so and so and so. These are all arrows that are uh, thrown at our heart. But we want our heart to be saved. So we want Allah's help. We want divine help to help us along this uh, difficult path. This path is not easy, but it will be easy with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to make lots of supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to make lots of dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Ya Allah. And we want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the best of endings. In, uh, uh, in another hadith, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, says in Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu bil layli liyatuba musi'un nahar wa yabsutu yadahu bin nahar liyatuba musi'un layl hatta tatli'a ash-shamsu min maghribiha so abu musa al-ash'ari radiyallahu anhu says um Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah the, the exalted will continue to stretch out his hand in the night so that the sinners of the day may repent. And continue to stretch his hand in the daytime so that the sinners of the night may repent until the sun rises from the west. What does this mean? Allah will always accept the repentance, accept asking him for forgiveness until the person dies. Here the hadith says, until the sun rises from the west. Well, what about if someone uh, dies before he witnesses this? Death is considered the first step of the day of judgment. So whoever dies, this means that his uh, day of judgment has started. So if they, if they do, do not repent and did not ask for forgiveness, then they will be uh, as those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about, حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب يرجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون For such is the state of the disbelievers. What is, what, what's this state? Until when death comes to one of them, he says, my Lord, send me back. You start to beg. So he died, he looked into his grave and he found that this grave is just but a hole of uh, fire, hell fire. So he would beg, my Lord, send me back that I might do righteous things, righteous things in, in, uh, uh, so I will, I will make it up. But Allah says, no, it's, a, it's only a word he's saying, no. And behind them is a barrier until the day of judgment, until the day they are resurrected. Even Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu used to do istighfar. So what type of istighfar? Istighfar Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is istighfar anwar wa laysa istighfar aghyar. Ghaynu anwar wa laysa ghaynu aghyar. What does this mean? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, 
إنه لا يغان على قلبي وإني لا أستغفر الله في اليوم مئة مرة. Says my heart feels heavy, so I do seek Allah forgiveness a hundred times every day. This is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He does this hundred times istighfar every day. We should not leave this, guys. We should stick to this. So we have 100 istighfar in the morning and 100 salawat in the morning and another one, another set in the evening before we go to bed. So why would Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do istighfar? He has no sins. Ghaynu anwar. His sins are light. What does this mean? Every day, every day, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is elevated to a higher place. So the nur that he has will be increased, will be bigger, will be higher. So he will make istighfar that he wasn't at this state the day before. That's the reason for his istighfar. Subhanallah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارَ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجًا وَمِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجًا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ So this is Ibn Abbas reporting. The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if anyone constantly seeks par- istighfar, seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will appoint for him a way out of every distress and a relief from every anxiety and will provide sustenance for him from where he expects not. He wouldn't think that this khair will be for him, but it will be, sustenance will be provided for him. And sustenance means uh, sustenance in health, sustenance in knowledge, sustenance in uh, uh, results, sustenance, sustenance in everything, not only in money, in everything. And those who are old, they would believe that the sustenance of health is the most important. Those who are young would say the sustenance of wealth is the most important. They want to start their life, so they need money. So each and every one would think of sustenance in their as per their own needs. And uh, Anas ibn Malik عنه, says, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَلَّهِ أَفْرَحُ بِتَوْبَةِ عَبْدِهِ مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ سَقَطَ عَلَى بَعِيرِهِ وَقَدْ أَضُلَّهُ فِي أَرْضٍ فَلَاتٍ Verily, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of his slave than a person who lost his camel in a desert and then finds it unexpectedly. Imagine how happy that person would be to, to, to find his camel, which has his food, his uh, tent, everything. So now you might ask, okay, now what is the highest form of uh, istighfar? What is the best supplication of istighfar? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us this. <clears throat> He taught us this supplication, and that was narrated by Shaddad ibn Aws, radiyallahu an, anna nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Sayyidu al-istighfari an yaqul al-abd, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma stata'at, a'awuzu bika min sharri ma sana'at, abu'u laka bin i'matika alayya wa abu'u bi zambi, faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfir al-zunuba illa ant. So he adds that, man qalaha min al-nahari muqinan biha fa mata min yawmihi qabla an yumsi, fa huwa min ahli al-jannah. 
ومن قالها من الليل وهو موقن بها فمات قبل أن يصبح فهو من أهل الجنة So the best supplication for, <coughs> for seeking forgiveness which is called سيد الاستغفار is to say اللهم أنت ربي Oh Allah, you are my Lord. لا إله إلا أنت. There isn't true God except you. خلقتني وأنا عبدك. You have created me and I am your slave. وأنا على عهدك ووعدك ما استطعت. And I, uh, I hold to you, to your covenant. As far as I can. أعوذ بك من شر ما صنعت. I seek refuge in you from the evil of what I have done. أبوء لك بنعمتك علي. I acknowledge the favors that you have bestowed upon me. وأبوء بذنبي. And I confess my, my sins. فاغفر لي. Forgive me, Allah. For none but you has the power to forgive. So he who supplicates this in, uh, in this term during the day uh, with firm belief in it and dies on the same day before the evening, he will be one of the dwellers of Jannah. And if anyone supplicates in these terms during the night well, with firm belief in it and dies before the morning, he will be one of the dwellers of Jannah too. SubhanAllah. So our last hadith is about tawbah, repentance, and istighfar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And uh, Ya Allah, you see us here. We have just come to a conclusion of our uh, series of this uh, 40 hadith of Al Imam Al Nawawi. And at the end, we ask you, Ya Allah, Subhanahu Ya Allah, to forgive us, to guide us, to help us, to protect us, to protect our children, to raise them the way you would be content with them. يا الله يا ربنا لك الحمد والشكر والنعمة والرضا يا الله make us content of everything that you have uh, uh, you have chosen for us يا رحم الرحيمين make us of those who strive to be one of your servants whom about you said رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن الله is pleased with, with them and they are pleased with Allah and at the end, I send my best salawat and my best salam along with your salawat and salam to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.